to my channel. So this is episode 20 of the LNS Crafts channel. Um, on this channel I share with you my experiences, um, discoveries, anything that I can really in relation to my knitting, crocheting, cross stitching and anything else crafty um, activities. Um, I don't have a lot of time today but I did want to come on and show um, what I have been working on, what I've finished up, that sort of thing. Um, because it's been around about four weeks now, so I think I'm kind of overdue a, a video. Um, I'm going to start off with the finished objects. Um, so that will be anything that I've finished up since my last video. The first thing that I've finished up is this top. This is the Breeze Tank Top. Um, I'm not very organised this morning because I've kind of just decided to do this quickly off the cuff while I have a bit of time. So this is the Breeze tank top. That's the pattern. I showed you this in my last um, video. Give it a bit of a closer look. That's what it looks like. And I think last time round I was kind of halfway there and let me just get up and show you this is where I am so this is my tank top um, I did make some mistakes on this and I'll share those with you in a minute this is what it looks like I'm on my knees so excuse me turning around in a funny way um, and here we go very very easy pattern to work on I think um, so the yarn I have used is King Cole yarn King Cole um, bamboo yarn, let me just find a label King Cole Bamboo Cotton that's the label and the colour I have used is I've forgotten the colour because I'm on to my next one now the colour is just green 533 green and as I said it's a very easy simple pan to do this is a mixture of cotton and acrylic I think is it acrylic? 50% bamboo, viscose, 50% cotton. That's the blend on the yarn. Um, I love the colour of this. It is very lightweight fabric. It is very drapey. Show you again. It just hangs nicely. Um, I worked the size for the 36 inch bust and I made a mistake on the side. So as you can see here, I have got um, garter stitch ridges here. This was a mistake. This was actually supposed to be on the front, not on the side. So um, I decided to keep it in because I liked the way it looked and I felt that it just kind of made it a little bit different. Also, I managed to make a mistake with the number of stitches that I um, increased for the underarm section. So on the pattern, I think what I was doing, I was reading one size so I was reading the um, information for the size 36 inch bust and what happened somehow as I turned the page I think and went on to continue working the underarms I somehow managed to be reading the next size up and increased too many stitches so it should have been eight I think and um, I actually increased by four However, I decided not to bother undoing that because I think I got literally halfway and then I realised, ah, I've got too many stitches on the underarm section. But I felt that it wasn't going to make a huge amount of difference. It would just make the top a little bit more roomy. It's not a huge problem for me. And um, so I just continued and this is what I've ended up with. So I used exactly three skeins of yarn for this top. Um, and I didn't manage to finish the cast off um, bottom, the cast off at the edge. Um, so at the bottom of the top it has more, let me show you here, at the bottom I think it's about four rows of garter stitching, garter stitch ridges. Mine has about three. Yeah mine has three because I ran out of yarn. I managed to use up exactly three balls of yarn and um, the top is still a decent length. It covers, doesn't cover my but it's kind of it sits on my on my hips and I think that's fine I like the fit I did um, it has a, uh, an eye cord bind off for the neck and the arms which 
I actually felt initially when I knitted it up I did feel that the arms were a little bit tight but now I've worn the top a couple of times it feels pretty comfortable the back of the neck is perfect for me um, it's high enough it's not too low that it's uncomfortable it's really nice I really enjoyed working this pattern and as I mentioned I've started a second one which I'll show you when I get on two whips um, so yeah I really love this very lightweight very nice for this kind of weather that we're having um, in the UK at the moment we're kind of having um, warmish weather but sometimes rainy you know it's been kind of the weather's kind of on and off at the moment and so I just kind of feel like at the moment I feel like wearing tops like this light tops that I can throw on a little jacket over um, and this is perfect and it's very lightweight feels really nice and it's kind of bright it kind of the brightness of these my knits is kind of bringing my mood up I find that when it's sunny when the weather is nice and sunny outside and it's not constantly cloudy and overcast my mood tends to change with the weather so I tend to be a lot happier when I'm when it's more sunny I guess like most people do but then also I tend to then wear brighter colors and this is kind of out of my comfort zone at the moment because in the last few months I've been wearing quite dark colors kind of autumnal colors and um, I just felt like I needed to kind of brighten up my wardrobe a bit and wear something that I make something that I wouldn't ordinarily be wearing you know at the moment I suppose and I just felt like this color is perfect perfect green I love it um, and I love the actual pattern so I have started another one so I'm going to put that pattern back with the second um, breeze tank top that I'm working on if you want any more information on this tank top and my experiences then do check my um, Ravelry project pages for that I will have in the description box below um, show notes linking you to all of my project pages for the product projects that I have been working on that I'm going to discuss in this video so check out the description box below if you miss anything in the video and you want to know what it was I was talking about check in the description box and you can see each um, project that I have worked on finished objects and whips there's also timestamps there will also be timestamps below so you can jump to whichever part of the video you want to so yeah so that's my first finished object um, next up I have, what have I got here, I have finished up another top, let me just grab that, okay so the next item is the place in the sun top, I finished this, I think I was more or less done with this last time, I just had to finish um, the sleeves and the neckline and I've done that, um, so this was a pattern that I got from Simply Knitting magazine, I think it was. And it's called The Place in the Sun Top. That's the pattern there by Sarah Hatton, I think. Yep, Sarah Hatton. And that is what I've finished. So this was from Simply Knitting. Um, I'm not sure what issue it is because it doesn't have it on this. I should have written it on there. Um, for this one I used the same bamboo cotton, um, so it's King Cole bamboo cotton and this is in the colourway green, not green, this one was Wisteria, I think, I don't think that is the correct label that I've got here, hmm, sorry about that, so this one is, yeah, this is in the colourway Wisteria, which is a lilac colour, hopefully you can see that from the video. Um, so I finished up the top and it fits really nicely. The I think I did everything to plan apart from, I think I mentioned in the last video that I made a mistake by um, when I finished the rib section at the bottom there, it's a bottom up top. When I finished the rib section at the bottom I forgot to change needles and um, so I'm still using small needles so you can probably see um, the difference when I realized that I was on the wrong needles I switched and continued um, I love the way that the arms are shaped here it's a really lovely um, shaping I really like that it fits really nicely um, I'll probably try and pop a picture up um, somewhere on here because I have them on my Ravelry 
I'll try and pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like. The front is knit exactly the same as the back. So although the front looks a little bit lower here, it's just the way it's being hung up. But the front is exactly the same as the back. Very easy. I work this in the round when it's meant to be worked flat because I couldn't be bothered to, to be doing seaming. Um, this is four ply, so it did take a while to do this. The pattern is very easy, but very effective. I really like that. The only thing I would change on this is not to use an odd bit of yarn um, that I had left over. Because this yarn that I used for this project, I had left over from a cardigan that I made um, I think last year and um, I, I, in my little stash I had a small ball of yarn this colour and I thought oh that must have been what I used for the bottom bit and I've forgotten to add it on silly me decided to add it into this project and as you can see it's produced a stripe because it seems to be a different dye lot so that was my big mistake um, as a consequence, I wasn't clear, I'm not sure whether to wear this side of the front or the back. I have worn this a few times and I've worn it to the back so it's not so visible, um, which is fine. But because the other issue I had was I started the pattern um, section a little bit lower on one side than on the other side. So... On this side the pattern starts down here and as I turn it around it starts a bit higher up so I somehow managed to mess up my measurements for where to start the pattern so when I've got this top on and I put it on the pattern starts a little bit higher up so it's not as revealing when I'm wearing it because um, I just wear um, a bra underneath this not a camisole just a bra and um, when I'm wearing it, if I'm wearing it this way with the higher lace, it's fine. But because of the stripe, I don't want to wear this as the front. So then I turn it around and I wear this side as the front. And this is a lot lower. So then you do end up seeing a bit of my bra from about up to about here before, you know, it starts to be less obvious. So, yeah, hindsight, eh? Um... If it wasn't for the fact that that stripe was there, I would wear this as the front because it's higher, the lace is higher. But obviously, um, the lace isn't higher in the pattern. Just to clarify, the lace isn't higher in the pattern. It's me just getting my measurements slightly off kilter. So if I'd have followed the pattern correctly or just made sure that my measurements were the same on each side, then I wouldn't have this problem. But if I do try this again, I will probably make the lace start a bit higher up so that I don't have the... The problem of of what to wear underneath because it's going to show on this top but yeah i love the neck i love the fitting of this it's very drapey as you can probably tell because it's a four ply cotton and um it's very lightweight and really nice and comfortable for the summer bit um slightly oversized what size did i knit i could have probably gone down a size i knit the size 12 to 14 so I could have gone down to an 8 to 10, judging by the way this knit up. Can't remember if I've got gauge on this, but it's come, it, it is loose, very loose fitting. Um, and I quite like that. That's fine for me. So yeah, so that is my, one of my other finished objects. Let me just drape that over there. Next up, I then sort of got into a hat knitting mood. And um, I made another Barley Light hat. So just to show you, Barley Light is tin can knits. And that's it there. The Barley Light uses um, four ply yarn or fingering weight yarn. And their other um, Barley hat uses DK weight yarn. So I have used four ply fingering weight yarn. And so I'm using the Barley Light pattern. And I was using the Knit Picks Felici yarn in the colourway. What's the colourway? Um, soft Serve. I think it's Soft Serve. Yeah, Soft Serve is the colourway. And this is what it looked like. Did I do a turned up edge? Yes, I did a turned over edge. So um, I just basically doubled over the, the rib. I started the rib section and then I did a pearl, a row of pearl bumps. I'm not sure if you can see that. 
and then I turned it over and then I started, I knitted the two lots of stitches together. I knitted the cast on edge from the bottom of the rib together with the stitches that I was, the live stitches and produced a doubled hem, double brim and I like the way that looks, I think that's quite neat and I've just stuck my little tag on. Nothing, I haven't done any other modifications for this pattern um, so it's pretty much just following the barley light pattern and that one's done and got my label so yeah so that's another one um, the only thing I would do differently on this I think what I've done here you can probably see where I've attached the rib I've been working my next row whilst I attached the rib was um, rib and I should have just done it in a knit row rather than rib because it shows up at the bottom there as a rib row to me I'm just a little bit fussy um, and that's that's just the only thing that bugs me about that otherwise that is ready to gift so that's my next finished object I'm going through my Ravelry page here so I can go pretty quickly um, next up was the antler hat I wanted to try doing some cables and um, I had in my what do you call it my Ravelry library um, cable pattern for the antler hat that I've been looking at for a while and the antler hat is I've, I like to print off my patterns because it makes it easier to do them kind of on the go while I'm moving around the antler hat again is antler tote by tin can knits that's what the pattern looks like and I made this up using a yarn that I got from B&M stores it's called trim premium multicolored yarn and I, it's just a pink multi kind of colored pink yarn and that's what it looks like the hat is quite big I must say it has worked up quite big um, I did that much rib I think I followed the pattern exactly did that rib this is a Aran weight yarn and it's come up really long and very thick um, I was really pleased with the way that the cables turned out I did indeed use a cable needle I'm quite happy with the way that it worked out I didn't have any I didn't have any issues with this I did seven repeats of the cable pattern before I started to do the decrease because as you can see it's looking quite long already and if I'd have continued doing the um, the nine decreases I would have run out of yarn and it would have been quite long so let me show you what it looks like on very big I've still got a bit of room in the top there so it would be a little bit too big if I'd have carried on doing the repeats so I'm quite pleased that I stopped where I did and I have a shawl that I made earlier on in the year out of the same yarn so that will go with that together with the hat and the two will be gifted so that's that one and as if I hadn't had enough of cables I then decided to move on to the Declan's hat excuse me I'm drinking ordinary tea there now the Declan's hat I had the pattern here somewhere where is it here it is is this one by Samantha Kirby this is I think it's a free pattern on Ravelry this is what it looks like I picked up a um, grey yarn called Lauren I got again from B&M store um, and it was an Aran weight yarn and I decided to do some more cables because I enjoyed the antler hat so much and I don't have the hat to show you because that has been gifted however I did post a picture on my Instagram and I do have a picture that I put up on um, my Ravelry page so I'll show you that once it loads okay so this is what the hat actually looks like when it was finished I think it was a little short in the body as you can probably see there but other than that I was quite pleased with the way it turned out the cables were perfect as somebody commented on how neat my cabling was on Instagram so I was pretty chuffed with that um, why is this not swiping there we go that's a bit of a closer look at the cabling I posted that on Instagram um, 
yeah I was really enjoying it I really really enjoyed the cables really I thought it was going to be more tricky than it was it's, it's one of those things where you feel like you, you're nervous about doing a particular project because of the fact that it includes something that you haven't done in a long time now, I've done cables before but I did them when I was a child maybe like 12 years old or something so um, back then I guess I was a lot more adventurous but this time around since taking up knitting again as an adult I haven't ventured to do cables until now so I was really nervous about doing cables so I gave the antler hat a try and once I got past that one then I thought well this one can't be too bad can it um, the, the, the cable twisting looks a bit complicated but the pattern was very clear very easy the pictures on the front show me exactly what the cabling is supposed to look like which I find really helpful when I can see a picture of what it's meant to look like because then I can see if I'm going wrong or not and um, I was really pleased with the way it turned out and I gave that to my husband to pass on to a friend and the friend loves it so that one is gone I then moved on to the Odessa hat which is a free pattern on Ravelry and um, it's not a cable hat but it is a hat with a kind of a twist a twisty hat I was trying to use up some leftover um, double knit weight yarns and Aran yarns that I had that I wasn't sure what to do with so um, I had some of this yarn left over and this is a style craft yarn um, this is the color burgundy it's style craft special double knit yarn in the color burgundy and so I made the Odessa hat which looks like this now this hat pattern is quite simple let's see if I can if I can try that on and show you what it looks like slightly small for my head so I think this is more a small adult or a teen so size hat this is what it looks like I think it's quite a neat beanie I like beanie style hats um, but this one is gonna have to be gifted because I've got quite a big head and <laughs> so the pattern has the it has the instructions to, to do it plain like this or to do it with beads and I didn't have any beads and never worked with beads and before so I decided to just follow the pattern as it was that's the pattern by Grumperina and it shows a picture at the bottom there and um, yeah that's the picture of the hat with the beads and I thought I'd give it a go and it was fine very self-explanatory um, I don't recall having any issues with this um, like I said the only thing that I found was that it wasn't big enough not long enough for my head and I followed the pattern um, properly worked for five and a half inches as per the instructions before decreases but it still it wasn't long enough for my head so I'd say this is more a teenage style teenage size or a small adult because um, it's doesn't I like my hats to cover my ears um, if you just like to if you're one that likes to just pop things on so they just kind of prop on your head and don't actually cover your ears then maybe you'd like this one but um, yeah so that's another one done another gift for my gift pile I just got into the mood of knitting hats really odd so then I had some more yarn left over um, from another project and I decided to work on my biscuit hat which is my own pattern um, I will link it below so with this one I used a mixture of two yarns I decided to double up um, two fingering weight yarns to use for this hat because I had a, a little bit of leftover yarn from another project and that was a Biff Sugar Yarns Superwash Merino and Cashmere Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon Yarn and that was in the colour Lost at Sea which is the brown colour that you can see here so this is the hat this is my biscuit hat and this brown colour that you can see mingled with the blue is Lost at Sea by Biff Sugar Yarns and I mixed that with Woolly Mama Yarns um, Four Ply Merino Sock Yarn in the colour Surfs Up so that's that blue and I kind of tried to find a way to blend the two colours together so I held the two yarns double so what I did I held the Lost at Sea the brown yarn double with the blue and knitted the rib and added in some beads which I will talk about in a minute then um, as I worked up I mixed 
the I did two rows of I was as I was running out of the brown I started to use two blue I started to alternate the yarn so I did two two of the blue yarn and two strands of um, a one strand of brown and one strand of blue this is not clear is it I alternated so originally I was doing a strand of brown from this color and the strand of blue together and using it as a double knit yarn and then because I was starting to run out of the brown then I had to start alternating skeins to try and make it kind of fade slightly so then you'll see here I've got two rows of blue and two rows of blue in between the brown and blue so what I've done is I've used um, the brown and blue together for up until this point then I've used blue and blue for a couple of rows then I've used brown and blue then blue and blue and that's how I've gone on until the browns run out and then I've moved into the blue so it should it has a kind of a nice fade not a perfect fade but it will do and um, follow the pattern as per the instructions but then I decided after doing the Odessa hat and seeing that I could work with beads I thought oh let me give some beads a try I've never worked with beads before so I went to the shop and I picked up some beads let me see if I can find them I think they're called size six beads um I got these on where do I get these wool warehouse size six beads that is them very small hopefully you can see them there very small beads they fit on a four millimeter um needle or four not four millimeter needle they fit on double knit yarn I think that's how it works I was under the impression that um, the size six was meant to fit on four millimeter needles, but I just I don't know. I managed to get a bit confused there. But they fit on the four millimeter on the DK weight yarn, the size six beads. So I had a go at um, using the crochet method and adding the beads just before before my garter ridge here and after the garter ridge and you can see it there it's not probably not the best placement for the beads but it does kind of show up let me try the hat on and show you what that looks like so there's the hat so you can see the beads a bit more visibly I thought it kind of made the, the hat look a little bit more girly um, I do have a bit of a slight slouch going on there it is slightly longer than my usual biscuit hat when I've knit that up which is fine because um, you can pop your hair up if, or if you've got more hair you know it will nicely fit underneath the hat but this is what it looks like I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out and I managed to use up some of the leftover yarn that I had so that's the biscuit hat um, biscuit hat is available on Ravelry do check that out it's available to purchase on Ravelry I should say um, so check that out that's a pattern by me and yeah that came out early on this year so that's the biscuit hat pretty pleased with the way that turned out um, what next then I have some socks I got in the mood for making socks I'm sorry I'm reaching all over the place but like I said I wasn't it was, this was like a, an impromptu video for me. Um, so then I got on two socks. I had some um, rainbow shorty yarn that I got as a sock set um, a little while ago from Pixie Yarns. And um, I decided it was time to use those and do some socks. And because the rainbow coloured yarn had 50 grams, I think it was, I wasn't sure if I was going to get proper length socks out of them. So I decided to opt for shorty socks and um, basically for the shorty socks all I've done is made a, a shorter cuff a shorter leg or a non-existent leg and um, just continued my normal vanilla recipe so these are my rainbow socks this is what they look like the yarn as I said is by pixie yarns she's on Etsy I will leave information in the description box below so check that out if you're interested in this yarn and these are just ordinary shorty socks so I've done a two by two rib cuff here using I started with a Norwegian cast on then I've done a two by two um, rib cuff then I've done about five rows and then I've gone straight into the heel flap and gusset down to the, the toe basically and that's all I've done wedge toe 
and yeah so that is that's my socks um, I really like the way that the yarn has turned out the striping is really cool very nice not what not, nothing in my sock stash is looking like this so um, yeah I'm really pleased with the way those turned out and that's my socks those are the first socks I've done in such a long time I haven't really been in a sock knitting mood so I've been kind of focusing on garments things that I you know tops I really want wanted to have lots of tops to wear um, I have some those were all my finished objects so I'm going to move on to works in progress Now this video is getting a bit long, so I'm going to whip through my, or whiz through my works in progress. The first one I have is my summer top, lace summer top. I did a white one, um, and this was it. And I decided I liked the white one so much I was going to do the red one. And so, the red one I have been using Drops Muscat Mercerized Cotton Yarn in the colour... Bordeaux, that's it. I mentioned this in my last video. I think I've done a size up from what I did last time because I wanted something really loose fitting, but I think I've gone a little bit crazy with it. Um, so it's quite, it's looking quite big. I've done one side and I did the half of the next side and then I ran out of yarn. So then I had to put it on hold. So that's the other side. Then I had to put it on hold and wait for the yarn to arrive. And since then I've kind of run out of steam. Um, I haven't picked this up in a while. Um, I have been working on other things. Um, I don't really have much to say about this because I've talked about it before in my last video when I did the white one. So there's not really a whole heap to say but I have kind of run out of steam on this now. And my crocheting mojo has kind of gone to sleep <laughs> for a while so that one is just waiting for me to finish off next up I have been working on the breeze tank top number two which I mentioned to you before and that one for that one I am using another yarn this is um, the same bamboo cotton king cold bamboo cotton in the color sea breeze so this is a different colour, but the same style. So, this is what it's looking like at the moment. You can probably tell. I haven't done... I've um, done the neck. I decided to finish off the neck because I didn't want to run out of yarn before finishing off the neck and the sleeves. So, and I wanted to see what they would look like and what to do them in because I didn't feel like doing this time the eye cord bind off for the sleeves. If you can see the eye cord bind off, you can barely see where it's bound off, which is fine. I mean, but I wanted to my tops to look slightly different. So, for this one, I've done a garter ridge around the neck here and um garter around the sleeves. Um like I did on the mermaid top. I think that's where I got the idea from. The mermaid top by Rebecca McKenzie or Raging Pearl Wind. I decided to do the garter for the sleeves and for the neck on this breeze top. Just to have it a little bit different. And um, since I made the mistake on this one under here with the pearl in the wrong place, this one is correct. This is going to be as per the pattern. So I'm doing quite well with this one. I'm just below the bust and so it's just plain knitting from now on in the round down to the hem and then it's done and I'll be able to wear it. I won't need to be doing all the neck and everything because it's already done so I'm really pleased with that. This is great TV knitting because all I need to do is remember or check how many rows I've done between each um, garter ridge and that's it. That's the only bit that I need to focus on other than that is pretty much plain sailing and I'm really enjoying this the only thing I would say about this yarn the bamboo yarn is very splitty um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that before I've had to correct a couple of times the splittiness of the yarn I can't see it off yeah here we go so if you look here you can see the yarn just kind of Sometimes I might miss 
not catch a stitch properly and you can see where it's not caught hopefully you can see that there sometimes you can just see where the thread has separated which is a bit annoying I've had to correct go back and correct one already because it was really annoying there it is it's here I can see it hopefully you can see what I mean so it's quite annoying when it splits because um, I'm not sure if I can show you with this so this is what the end of the yarn looks like see it will split like that sometimes when you're picking up a stitch so you have to be very careful that you get all of the strands of this yarn um, in each stitch and not miss it because then it can really mess up the way that the knitting looks um, especially if it's in an obvious place like on the front then you don't really want that to be showing up so much see I've got one here oh, there it is I can see it there where it's split hopefully it's not it's not so obvious but it is annoying so bear that in mind if you're thinking about getting the King Cole bamboo yarn that might happen but other than that I really love the way that that yarn feels it drapes nicely it's very lightweight very cool and I enjoy wearing it so I would that's the only downside to that yarn I feel um, so yeah the pattern as I mentioned before pattern is fine um, no problems there so I have moved on whilst I'm working on the breeze top I have started doing my vertices you night shawl by Stephen West and do I have the pattern to show you so this is the pattern vertices you night by Stephen West and uh, this is what it looks let's show you that can I show you that that's what the actual shawl will look like something like that in the end but it's quite big you can get the it comes in a large size and a smaller size and I've decided to do the larger size because I've got quite a lot of yarn that I wanted to use for that so, so this is the first section that I worked on and it is this gorgeous blend of brown and pink and this is um, made using this yarn which is by Dusty Dimples and this is in the colorway Torpid it is such a beautiful it's a gradient kind of pink yarn there's no speckles in this it's just gradient really really nice tonal even and it's so soft it's a superwash merino nylon base and um, the actual the actual yarn is fingering weight <laughs> that's what I was trying to figure out it's fingering weight yarn and it's 75 75 25 uh, merino nylon that's that one the other yarn the other color that I used to go with this was the brown so I used these two colors together for that section the brown is um, Biff Sugar Yarns Gone to Earth colorway it's a beautiful brown color I have another skein of this that I'm going to use for another project but that's another tonal brown yarn it is so nice the two of them are just perfect together and I just Ooh, I just love the way it looks and I'm thinking that would look so nice in a top wouldn't it could I get away with a top out of this just in like a garter stitch top hmm. I really really like these colors together and I'm actually tempted to buy some more just so I could use it and make a top out of these two anyway so then as a, the vertices unite if you if you don't know this is made in different sections um, so the next next section was section two and that's what that one looks like so I've used two colors again and those two colors are um, what is this one I have to check it now this one is lay family yarns which is a merino nylon um, fingering yarn again this is a more of a speckled kind of pinky cream color base and that's what that looks like and alongside that one I used the jelly beans yarn um, which is a merino nylon sock and this is in the color summer berries so I used these two together to create that stripey effect there so um, I can't go into detail about exactly what I did what kind of striping 
but it's striping and those are the two yarns that I use. So that's section two. I'm now on to section three. This is such an interesting knit. I'm really enjoying working on this um, because it kind of, it's something that it's not, although it's all garter stitch, it just keeps you thinking, but it's not difficult, if you know what I mean. It's not a difficult knit. Nothing is difficult about the pattern, but it's still interesting. It keeps my interest and I just want to get onto the next one, the next section and the next section. So the next section, section three, which I've more or less just started is this colorway that I'm using. It's just one color and this is Gobstopper yarn. And not Gobstopper yarn. The yarn is Somerset Yarns, Superwash Merino and Nylon Stellina sock yarn so this has got a bit of sparkle in it that's what it looks like and you probably can't see the sparkle but that's what it looks like and that is what I've used for that section I'm kind of not sure about this choice for this section but I'm gonna go with it and see how it looks um, it looks a bit kind of mm, odd with this maybe I, I'm thinking maybe I should have just gone with a tonal yarn rather than a kind of a speckled but I'm just going to continue with it and see how I get on um, I don't have well I've got quite a lot actually I do have a lot left to do of that section so this shawl goes that way like that so this is where I am at the moment and I've got that section to complete the gobstopper section here this will come outwards so I've got quite a lot to do but I am really enjoying this I keep putting down my breeze top just to do this because I'm loving it that much and I love working with the different colorways I've never done a project where I've used so many different colorways in the one project so this is like my first big color work project and I'm really really enjoying it and I can't say enough about it it's my first ever Stephen West pattern as well so yeah, so it's been an interesting, um, the different techniques he uses within the pattern are interesting as well. I'm enjoying learning those, but yeah, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm really enjoying this project. So I can't really, can't say any more than that guys. I'm really enjoying it. If you're interested, then check out the, check out the pattern. Vertices Unite by Stephen West. Really, really fun to, to knit. Really enjoying that. So I think that is it. Those are my finish of it oh I have one more whip so I've decided I have this sock yarn by Opal um this one don't remember what it's called now what is it called Gerber Unglaublich uh, I don't know I'm not sure I'm not German or I think it's German yeah made in Germany I'm not German I don't understand it German so I'm not sure I pronounced that properly sorry if I haven't but this is the yarn I'm using and I decided to just do a what do they call it afterthought everything sock because um i don't particularly like the yarn i like the color but i don't particularly like the, the feel of it it's very scratchy and i just feel like i could do with a project where i just knit 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 knit, knit, knit and then think about stuff afterwards so this would be like a blind knitting um projects for me that's the plan to just knit 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 on this until I've finished all the yarn and then decide what to do about then split it in two and do the heels and toes and then that'll be the end of that and that's another skein of yarn gone so that's the plan with this I've only done a couple of rows of ribbon basically not a lot so that's it and that's where I am with that and that is my last work in progress I'm not following a pattern for that I'm just kind of doing what feels right <laughs> um, it's a bit of an experiment and then I will see how I get on so I picked up the sea surge and storm bay patterns by Lisa much these were on Ravelry at a discount price I think it was buy one get one free something like that so I picked those up they're both shawl patterns and I've never done a pattern by her before and I thought I'd give it a try um, kind of off the back of doing the Vertices Unite shawl because I'm really enjoying the colour work on that and doing another shawl and um, so I picked these up because they were on offer and I like the look of them and they're both fingering weight yarns and um, both, hang on, one's a triangle shaped shawl this one's triangular, the Storm Bay 
and this one is a semi-circular shawl so that'll be interesting so that's those two I also picked up a pattern from Pebbles from Hay Brown Berry um, this is her Pebbles and Pathways sock and it's her first pattern and that's what it looks like and I picked that up that was on offer she's got a sock along going on at the moment I think it's called what's it called Let's see if I can find it sock um, where are you successful make along it's called and in there she had um, so an offer for some patterns and this was one of them I think it was um, 50 percent 50% off this was a free pattern you choose one free pattern and you buy one something like that I can't remember now but have a look she's hey brown berry and friends um, group Ravelry group and it's the 20 2019 sock successful make along and everyone's just making socks I think it runs until September and you just make whatever sock patterns whatever socks you want to make and um, put it in there just to join in the fun basically just to have a go at socks if you've never done socks before if you've done them before if you've done a million before just join in join in the fun maybe discover new patterns discover new people to talk to about patterns yeah it's just a bit of fun and I got that as a one of the offers from that make along so I'm looking forward to that the last um, incoming thing I have to show with you show you is some yarn that I picked up and that is Hi Ho Silver. So, as you guys probably remember, Woolly Mama Yarns is one of the people that I buy from quite often, and um, she donated a skein of yarn to my last um, giveaway, and that was the Pinnock and Needles, um, what was it called now? Ready, Set, Go, Make Along. She donated a beautiful skein of yarn to that giveaway and it was the high ho silver yarn and I loved it so much I decided to buy some for myself so I picked up two packets of the high ho silver yarn to make a jumper with for my daughter or a cardigan or something I just wanted to make something with this yarn I love the way it looks she posted a picture on her Instagram of what it looks like knit up knit up as a sweater for her daughter I think it was and I couldn't resist I thought that looked so nice so cute my daughter would love that the colors are perfect for this time of year um, just I just love the way it looks and so I decided to pick up a couple of um, a couple of skeins of that and see what I can make with that for my daughter because I'm sure she would love it so yeah that is it I'm sorry if I have appeared to be a bit, a bit rushed but as I did say at the beginning I have been short I am short for time and I've probably gone over the time that I should have spent doing this but yes that is it thank you for watching um, if you are interested in getting involved in the make-alongs then do check out my Ravelry group it's the LNS crafts Ravelry group um, you can find me on Ravelry as LNS Crafts. Um, on Instagram, I'm LNS Crafts as well. If you want to just see what I've been making, what I'm up to, follow my progress on certain projects, then check that out. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below, or any comments, then share them below the video. And um, make alongs I have going on at the moment. I have the summer wear make along, I have the um, fin not vanilla biscuit socks make along and I have the amigurumi project make along some of them have prizes available up for grabs um, some of them don't check out the information in those particular make alongs to find out what's available and what you need to do to participate um, I have been given some prizes um, to put towards those some of those make-alongs or any of my make-alongs in future so um, I will at some point get around to sharing those with you so and deciding which ones are going to go into which projects so there will be prizes um, but I don't have time to show you those now maybe I'll show you in the next episode or I'll do another video showing you um, what the prizes are but I don't want to take up too much more of your time thank you very much for watching um, if you like the video give me some thumbs up if you're not subscribed then you can if you'd like to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button um, underneath the video and if, if you want to ensure that you don't miss any videos then click the little notifications bell that's right next to the subscribe button and that will let you know each time I upload a video I tend to upload on a monthly basis rather than um, 
bi-weekly or anything like that purely because I don't really have a lot of time to do um, regular videos and I like to be getting on with my knitting and my crafting so that I've got stuff to show you so yeah that is it I'm gonna leave it there thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next one bye for now